A few months ago, Dr. Paul Saladino posted a video saying that we should stop eating turmeric and black pepper. More recently, Physionic posted papers in a video on his channel about why Paul may be wrong. Now, rather than rehash that story, I can add to it, as I have 35 blood tests over the past six plus years. So with that in mind, are turmeric or black pepper bad for health? So let's start off with the approach. Since 2015, I've weighed all my food with a food scale. I've then entered those daily food amounts into uh, an app known as Chronometer. And if you want to track your own diet using Chronometer, discount link below. And then I've taken that data and entered it into a spreadsheet. Now note that I've tracked macros and micros since 2015, but it wasn't until 2018 that I started manually entering food intake into that spreadsheet too. So I have six years of tracked food intake, including turmeric and black pepper. So then each blood test over the past six years has a corresponding average dietary intake. For example, if there's a 50-day period in between blood tests because I'm tracking diet, the average daily intake for those 50 days lines up with the latter test. So then each blood test has a corresponding average dietary intake, and then I can calculate correlations once I have enough blood tests and tracked dietary data. So with that in mind, we can see how much turmeric I've consumed for each blood test over the past six years. And that's what's shown here. So note that I've had medium, low, and relatively high intakes of turmeric over this six year period. And again, each of those dots corresponds to a blood test. So average turmeric intake during this six year period is 1.3 grams per day. And note that this is a ground turmeric powder for almost exclusively all of it. There may have been a test or two where I tried adding a little bit of fresh turmeric, but it's almost exclu exclusively ground turmeric powder. More recently though, my average turmeric intake is closer to three grams per day. All right, similar story for black pepper. I've had times with medium, low, and relatively high intakes. Average uh, black pepper intake during this six, six year period is 0.5 grams per day. And more recently, my average intake or current intake is around two grams per day. All right, so then, I, as I mentioned, I calculate correlations for diet with biomarkers, and we can use that approach to evaluate whether turmeric or black pepper may be bad, neutral, or good for health, at least in my case, which then raises the question, which biomarkers? So now we're going to take a look at 26 comparisons for biomarkers with turmeric and black pepper with biomarkers of many organ systems, and that's what we can see here. So it, it's, it may be hard to see, so I'd recommend going full screen if you haven't already. So I've broken this down into segments. So we've got four markers of metabolic health, including glucose, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. Three markers of kidney function, including creatinine, blood urea, nitrogen, BUN, BUN, and uric acid. Three markers of liver function, including albumin, the combination of AST and ALT. And note that I combine them because I find that more informative rather than looking at either of the, those two alone. And also alkaline phosphatase as a marker of liver function. Immune-related components, and note that I don't track total white blood cells, but I split them up into, into their differentials, including the sum of neutrophils and monocytes, as both, both of those increase in the same direction during aging. Lymphocytes, the lymphocyte percentage, and platelets. Three markers of red blood cell-related measures, including red, total red blood cells, the red blood cell distribution width, or RDW, which is a major contributor to Morgan Levine's, Dr. Morgan Levine's biological age calculator, phenoage, and the average red cell volume, the MCV, five markers of biological age, including phenoage, aging.ai, two markers of epigenetic aging, Horvath and Dunedin Pace, and then telomere length, which generally isn't a good marker of biological age, but it declines during aging and it's a hallmark of aging. So I think it's important to include that. In terms of androgens, I have data for DHEA sulfate over this period. For vascular health, I have systolic blood pressure and homocysteine. And then for inflammation, I have high sensitivity C-reactive protein. So that's the panel of 26 biomarkers. And then at the top of the columns, we, on the left, we've got the correlation coefficient, lowercase r, the p-value as the measure of statistical significance. And in this case, we're going to use 0 0.05, less than that, as a significant correlation. And then on the right, we've got the number of tests. So you can see that I have up to 35 tests for the blood biomarkers, and then as low as 11 tests for blood pressure, 12 tests for DHEA sulfate, and the epigenetic measures. But the majority on this list, more than 30 tests. And then I'm going to color code the correlations when turmeric is going in the right direction or wrong direction. So if the correlation is going in the right direction, what that means is that 
turmeric's correlation is inverse relative to how the biomarker changes during aging and or all-cause mortality risk. So as just one quick example, we can all agree that glucose levels increase during aging and higher levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So if turmeric is inversely correlated with glucose, that would be a green correlation as it would seem to resist the age-related increase for glucose. Conversely, I'm going to color code uh, correlations red if turmeric's correlation goes in the same direction as age-related or all-cause mortality changes. So with that in mind, turmeric is indeed significantly correlated with lower glucose, higher HDL, and that's good news because HDL declines a bit during aging, relatively lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And I should say, I'm just saying that information. If anybody has uh, wants to know where those papers and that data comes from, I can post it in the comments. And most of that data is already on the channel, but leave a comment and I'd be happy to direct you to the uh, data for aging and all-cause mortality for each of these biomarkers. All right, so then turmeric is also inversely correlated with blood urea nitrogen and uric acid. So higher levels of turmeric significantly correlated with lower levels of those two markers of kidney function, lower levels of AST and ALT and alkaline phosphatase, lower levels of the combination of neutrophils and monocytes, a lower RDW, a younger phenoage, a longer telomere length, uh, a lower systolic blood pressure, and lower high sensitivity C-reactive protein. In sum, there are 12 correlations that are going in the right direction, which would seem to resist age-related or all-cause mortality risk changes. But we also have some red correlations, and there are four of those. First is that turmeric intake is significantly correlated with higher triglycerides, uh, lower levels of platelets and red blood cells. Note that both of those decline during aging, so that would be going in the wrong direction. And then higher homocysteine. Homocysteine increases during aging, so a positive correlation in that case for turmeric with homocysteine going in the wrong direction. So when we take, I should note, there's also one more on this list, which is LDL. And that's a bit more tricky because LDL follows an inverse U during aging. Low in youth, peaks at midlife, low also at advanced age. So whether relatively low levels would be good or bad, that, that's, a, that's a bit tricky. So nonetheless, we've got 12 greens and four reds without considering LDL yet, for a net correlative turmeric score of plus eight, which suggests that turmeric, at least based on these correlations, would not be bad for health in my case. Even factoring LDL, that would be a plus seven or a plus nine. All right, so what about ground black pepper? So we, using the same approach here, we've got 10 correlations going in the right direction, highlighted in green, including glucose, lower glucose, higher HDL, lower uric acid and alkaline phosphatase, lower neutrophils and monocytes, and RDW, a younger phenoage, a longer telomere length, lower systolic blood pressure, and lower HSCRP. In terms of the correlations going in the wrong direction, coded in red, there are three, including lower platelets, lower red blood cells, and higher homocysteine. So when taking that score, we get a, and that also includes LDL here too, in, in terms of the correlations. So when taking that score, 10 minus three, we get a net correlative score for black pepper of plus seven, which could be plus six, including LDL or plus eight. So based on this data and based on these correlations, that would seem like turmeric and black pepper are not bad for health. If they were bad for health, I'd expect to see a lot more red and a lot less green in terms of correlations. But there are a couple of extra layers to this story. Over this six year period, I'm 17 pounds lighter. So is body weight driving these correlations? So for that, let's take a look at correlations for body weight with these same 26 biomarkers and specifically only looking at correlations for body weight that overlap with turmeric or black pepper. And note that I'm going to give body weight its own video uh, at some point in the near future. So this is basically a prelude to that. So body weight is uh, inversely correlated with HDL. So higher uh, body weight is significantly correlated with a lower HDL, red arrow going in the wrong direction, lower, uh, higher uric acid, Again, that's going in the wrong direction. Uric acid increases during aging. Higher alkaline phosphatase, which higher alkaline phosphatase is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. Higher neutrophils and monocytes. A higher RDW. A lower telomere length. Higher systolic blood pressure increases during aging. And higher HSCRP. So we've got a lot of red so far in terms of body weight correlations that overlap with turmeric or black pepper. A higher body weight is also significantly correlated with higher platelets and higher red blood cells, which would be going in the right direction as both of those decline during aging. 
And also note that a higher body weight in my case is also significantly correlated with higher LDL, which I've given, given the uh, purple or, or dark blue arrow as it could go either way. So when summing the reds and greens, we get a net overlap score for body weight. Again, these are biomarkers that were also significantly correlated with turmeric or black pepper with, uh, with a score of minus six. So that suggests that a lot of the overlap may be coming from body weight. So is body weight driving the net correlative scores for turmeric or black pepper? So rather than looking at univariate correlations, in other words, is turmeric or black pepper on their own significantly, significantly correlated with a singular biomarker, in other words, univariate correlations, we can investigate associations after adjusting for body weight, and that involves linear regression models, one of which is shown here. So here we're looking at the collective association for turmeric and body weight against glucose. And even after adjusting or including body weight in the model, we can see that turmeric is still significantly correlated or sorry, associated with lower glucose after adjusting for body weight. And you can see that the coefficient is negative and the p-value is far below 0.05. Similarly, if we do use the same model for black pepper, now black pepper is in the model and also it, uh, so is body weight. Here too, we can see that after adjusting for body weight, black pepper is significantly associated with lower levels of glucose. So together, both of these, after adjusting for body weight, turmeric or black pepper is significantly associated with lower glucose in my data. All right, so this is just one biomarker though. We've got 26. What about the others? So now we're gonna take a look at body weight adjusted correlations for turmeric with these 26 biomarkers. And now at the top columns, instead of looking at the correlation coefficient, we're gonna look at the beta coefficient, which is just the measure of is it increasing or decreasing association. And then in the far right column, we've got the body weight adjusted p-value. So that's the p-value for the association for turmeric with each biomarker after including body weight in each linear regression model. So when using this approach, we can see that turmeric is still significantly associated with lower glucose, with lower alkaline phosphatase, low neutrophils and monocytes, a younger phenoage, and lower HSCRP. So we've got five correlations going in the right direction. We, then we have two still going in the wrong. So after adjusting for body weight, turmeric is still significantly associated with lower platelets and lower red blood cells. And again, both of those decline during aging. That would be going in the wrong direction. Also note that LDL is still a part of this story as after adjusting for body weight, turmeric is still significantly correlated with lower LDL, which could go either way. Nonetheless, when taking the uh, sum, uh, summing the greens and reds, five going in the right direction, minus two in the wrong, we get a body weight adjusted net association turmeric score of plus three, which could be plus two, but it could also be plus four depending on LDL. But still, this is a net positive association score. In other words, turmeric is still potentially positive for the net of these 26 biomarkers. So similar story for black pepper after adjusting for body weight significantly associated with lower glucose, higher HDL, lower uric acid, a younger phenoage, and lower HSCRP, but also lower platelets and red blood cells, which would be going in the wrong direction. So that's why they've got red arrows. So here too, we have five correlations going in the right direction in green, and two in the wrong. We've got a net body weight adjusted association score for black pepper of plus three. So here too, turmeric or black pepper after accounting for body weight seems to be a positive, at least on the net of these 26 biomarkers. But there is a third and last level, level of statistical rigor that we can add to this approach. And that's because when using a p-value less than 0.05, that means that there are five potential false positive associations per 100 comparisons. So to put that into perspective, we have 26 comparisons on the left for turmeric, and 26 comparisons on the right for black pepper. So there could be two, at least two false positives in either the greens or reds or even LDL. So calculating the FDR or the false discovery rate and using a restrictive FDR of less than 0.05 can help address this. So now we're gonna take a look at body weight adjusted associations for turmeric with the 26 biomarkers after including the FDR less than 0.05, a restrictive FDR. And in terms of where it is, it's on the far right, FDR. So we still have turmeric is associated, significantly associated with lower glucose. You can see that the FDR is less than 0.05, lower alkaline phosphatase, and lower high sensitivity C-reactive protein. On the other hand, it's still significantly associated with lower platelets, which is going in the wrong direction, so we give it a red arrow. 
So here, even after including a restrictive FDR of less than 0.05, we've got three correlations going in the right direction and one in the wrong for a FDR and body weight adjusted net turmeric association score of plus two. All right, what about black pepper? So using the same approach, black pepper after accounting for body weight and using that restrictive FDR is still, still significantly associated with lower glucose and lower HSCRP, but also lower red blood cells, which is going in the wrong direction. So here we have two greens and one red for a net association score, body weight adjusted net association score, which includes that restrictive FDR of plus one. So now we can address that question, are turmeric and black pepper bad for health? And we've seen that whether using unadjusted correlations or body weight adjusted associations or body weight adjusted associations, including an, a restrictive FDR less than 0.05, in each of those cases, the net correlative or association score has been positive. In other words, turmeric and black pepper are potentially positive for health, at least in my case, based on the data-driven analysis that I've shown here in terms of its association for these 26 biomarkers. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon, where I offer blood test consults. We've also got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, any dequantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home uh, at metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB and Grimage, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, as I mentioned earlier, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.